probably done it yourself. Dropped a snack on the floor, scooped it up in seconds and convinced yourself it's fine. The long-standing food folklore is often referred to as the three-second rule. But does speed really protect you from germs and bacteria? In a Sunrise special investigation, we had scientists actual scientists run the experiment to see what happens when food meets the floor and here with the results is science communicator Maddie Massey. Hello Maddie. Okay so talk us through the experiment. What did you do? We started with two types of food, plain dry toast and sliced boiled egg and then we dropped it on the ground and we left it there for two seconds or ten seconds and then scientists from a lab called Neogen counted the number of bacteria on the food and they compared this to clean samples that had not been dropped. Okay mm. so the results are in <laughs> did bacteria get on the food? They definitely did. And so it was really interesting. We saw that there was a big increase in bacteria after two seconds on the floor, but then there wasn't a further increase after 10 seconds. So this suggests to us that as soon as the food hits the floor, there's a transfer of bacteria over. And if you're dropping something on the ground and you think quickly rushing to pick it up is going to help, it doesn't not. make any difference. So looking at the little pictures that we just saw there, are all the little red splodge, is that all bacteria? Yes. Oh! <laughs> How does it get on there in two seconds? Oh, the bacteria, they just go bing. Do yeah. they? Yeah, absolutely. And we found as well, it's influenced by the type of surface and the type of food. So if you have a food that is wet and sticky with flat surfaces, so like the sliced boiled egg, or a flat smooth surface like kitchen tile, you're mm. going to get way more transfer. Oh, okay. okay, so if it was toast, so it's a bit bumpy, you wouldn't you get You might as be much a bit safer because you might only have it around the edges or something like that. Yes. Okay, yes, so exactly. what about people that are saying, oh, I've done it my whole life and I'm never sick? Yeah, well, they do actually have a point. Okay, so when you drop food on the ground, you're immediately going to get lots of bacteria. But a lot of those bacteria are not actually going to be harmful to humans. So oh. the likelihood of you getting sick from eating food off the floor is actually low. That being said, I'm not recommending it. Okay, because I okay. am not that germophobic, so I would do this all the time, but you wouldn't do it, say, in a public toilet. Oh, I, no. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Just asking no, is that friend. No, is that the difference? You is know. that what you're talking about? Like, if you did it in yeah. <laughs> your kitchen floor as opposed to, like, the bathroom? The toilet. That is... Very good, yes. I'm glad we clarified Thanks, that. Thanks, Maddie. Yeah, thank you. I was, no, was, a good, very I was good judged question. on that question. It was a very good question. But that's what you mean. It, it depends what type of bacteria is on there. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's going to be a bit different if you're, you know, in the carpet of your living room versus a public toilet, mm. you know, where lots of people are tracking through and you don't really know what's on the ground. So how would you ever know if getting an upset tummy was from that? I mean, mm. we, we never know, right? We never know. We're getting exposed to so many bacteria all the time. It's really hard to pinpoint where it came from. OK, mm. before we let you go, we've got to do... <laughs> I've got to ask you this yeah, question. This is weird. I saw um, this one too. There's a trend going around online that if you cook rice, then you freeze it, then you reheat it, it has less calories. Is that true? That is actually true. It's, it's really oh. cool. Yeah, yeah. So the process of that heating and then cooling increases what's called resistant starch. And this is a type of starch that isn't digested as normal in your small intestine. So you're getting less calories, you're getting less carbohydrates and less of a blood sugar spike when you eat that rice. And so that's better for you. Did you hear the shock go around the studio floor then? <laughs> Can you believe that? ten people back there who yeah. are... Who you haven't listened to a word we've said no. all morning until that. They're running to the freezer. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. So is it, it's in the freezing, is it? Yeah, so it's the heating and then the cooling. So you can also cool it down in the fridge. And you can do this with other starchy foods. Like some people freeze their bread and then they put it in the toaster to eat it. It's oh, well, I do that. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah we do that too. Yeah, oh, my okay, because rice can carry a lot of bad stuff, can't it? Especially yes. if you leave it over a couple of days. Yeah, so you have to be careful. You know, you shouldn't be leaving it in the fridge for more than two days. So okay. it could be fridge or freezer. Yes. With the rice. That's right. Mm. Maddie. Okay. This has been very informative. Oof. Thank you. We need to get you back. So much. This is Sunrise Investigations. We're getting real si actual scientists yes. to do this actual real thing. lab tests. We've got white coats and everything. Yeah, have, you, <laughs> have you got a white coat? Can you wear I, that in next time? I do. Maybe I should bring it next time. Bring yeah. it next time. Okay. If you've got something that you want us to investigate, oh, yeah. let us know. That's yes. Because people would have so much Absolutely. that they see online and they think, mm. we don't know if that's know. true.